Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. Choosing the right video antenna can be confusing when you're first starting out. When you break an antenna and buy what you think is the right one with the right connector, it turns up and it doesn't fit. So you have to go and buy another one. And antennas aren't that expensive, but it's really, really annoying having to wait for a new one to turn up, especially when you want to go out and just fly. So here's my complete beginner's guide to VTX antenna connectors. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and hit the bell to get notified when I publish new content. Now, the whole point of an antenna connector is to connect the actual antenna, this part here, to the video transmitter or the VTX and also to the video receiver, the VRX. Today, I'll just be talking about VTX antennas because they're the first and most likely things that you're going to break when you start flying. And at the moment, there's three competing FPV drone antenna connector standards. There's SMA, like this, MMCX, like this guy here, and UFL, which is this little tiny guy there. And they all have different benefits, costs, reliability and application. SMA connectors are the most common. They've been used as RF coaxial connectors for years and have been used in FPV since the start. SMA connectors are pretty standard on VTXs and they were the original standard. But although they're still very common, popularity is in the decline due to the introduction of MMCX and UFL connectors, which I'll talk about in a minute. SMA connectors are attached by screwing the male and female components together. So they're extremely robust and durable. If you attach them with cable ties or on a mounting bracket, it's pretty rare you're going to break one and you're more likely to pull the antenna wire out of the SMA connector itself. Plus, the average SMA connector is rated to 500 mating cycles. That means you can connect it and disconnect it 500 times. And this means you can plug them in loads and loads without damaging them or affecting their performance. The main disadvantage of SMA connectors is the weight. These connectors here are about 5 grams, which is a lot when you've got a lightweight racer or a mini quad. They're also relatively large, which can be a problem if you're trying to build something like this, a tiny whoop. Now, confusingly, SMA connectors come in two distinct flavours. There's SMA, like this, and reverse polarity SMA, or RPSMA, which is like this. And they look, to all intents and purposes, completely the same especially when you're looking around on websites. But they're not compatible with each other, although there's no performance difference. And you won't be the first person to accidentally buy the wrong one. So if we look at these two, this is an RPSMA and this is an SMA. If you look very closely, this is a male connector. It's got a pin in the middle. And this is an SMA connector an SMA male. This is an RPSMA and it's effectively a female, there's no pin, what you've got is a socket there. Now out of the two, SMA is the most common but always check carefully before purchasing because it does depend on different manufacturers when you're buying ready-to-fly quads and so on. And SMA connectors have the widest range of available antennas for example, this patch antenna, this is an SMA, you can see. It's got the screw here, and we've got the pin in the middle. There's loads of these sorts of things around. So take a look at these fat sharks. This is an SMA connector. So if we take an SMA, we've got a pin in the middle, and we've got a hole there, and this just screws in, and it connects. And this is great because it means that you can actually use the SMA connector 
on your video transmitters and your receivers so you can sort them in the field so if you were using this on your quad and for some reason you broke the one in your goggles you can just take it off your quad and you can just screw it in here and remember not to attach a female SMA to a female RPSMA so here we've got an RP SMA antenna and you could screw it into here and it fits that's fine but it's not going to work why well if you look carefully this is an RP SMA it doesn't have a pin this is an SMA and that doesn't have a pin either so when you screw the two together all you're connecting is the outer so there's no inner connection and that has caused much head scratching to fathom out why you've got a really bad video signal when you're in the field there's no centre pin so why do RPSMA connectors exist if there's no difference in video quality well the FCC and other regulators in their wisdom wanted a way to stop high gain antennas being used on consumer Wi-Fi routers and hubs so manufacturers who wanted to be compliant dreamed up RPSMA which effectively reversed the polarity of antennas and made them incompatible to stop people using them now if you do get the wrong gender or type of SMA or RPSMA there's loads of adapters that you can get now these can be straight or angled and this is a convenient way of just fixing up problems that you've got but to be honest the chances are that when you buy one of these you'll get the wrong one as well and you just double your problem which is really really annoying so for example this is an SMA right angle it's got an SMA hole in there it's a female this is an SMA male so that will screw in there quite nicely and make contact and if I wanted to this is a bit of a bizarre way of doing things but you see the sort of thing that you can do this is SMA that's got a pin on it and that will screw directly on there no problem at all and obviously you can get different angled ones to suit whatever you want to do this is a right angle one here now this is a 45 degree but this is RP SMA so look if I try to screw that on there that's got a pin and that's got a pin so this is an SMA male and this is an RP SMA male the outer will screw together but because they've both got pins they won't mate up this is how the manufacturers have made them incompatible to stop high gain antennas being used on Wi-Fi equipment it's bizarre but that's the way it is but my recommendation is if you've got the wrong antenna don't go and buy a load of these because you'll probably end up getting the wrong ones just go and get the right antenna okay let's move on to UFL connectors like this guy here these are also known as IPEX connectors and the UFL is a common connector on very small VTXs here we go we've got a small nano VTX here they're also very popular on radio receivers like the FR Sky XM and XM Plus so if you look at a spare antenna for an XM or an XM Plus you'll see it's using the same small UFL connector the reason they use them is just because they're so small it's got no thread and is attached by popping them together so if I take that off there I can just press that on like that and the male that's on the PCB is actually soldered onto here with three connections they're a lot more fragile than standard SMA or RPSMA connectors um, and they're small but they have a very limited mating cycle maybe 30 to 50 insertions but they weigh practically nothing less than a gram for the whole connector so they're very popular with racers and lightweight builds like this you'll notice in here if you look very carefully we've got a simple sort of dipole antenna which is just connected direct to the VTX board under here with a simple UFL connector 
Now, the male part is usually soldered to the VTX PCB. And I've had instances when I thought the antenna had come unplugged in a crash. But it was actually the male part being ripped off the PCB pads. They're pretty fragile, these. And if you're going to mount them, it's a good idea to put some hot glue on top of the UFL when you've plugged it on. Now, if you do decide to try and fix one of these to your PCB, you're going to need a really fine soldering iron and a steady hand. Now, these are very fragile. What I like to do is to put heat shrink over the connections on the VTX to secure it in place and then leave some slack on the antenna wire. And that secures it down quite nicely. Generally, you won't need to get to the channel change button on modern day VTXs because if they're using smart audio you can actually set this in the OSD on your goggles. If you don't need to swap the antenna in and out all the time this is a good choice of connector. One other popular thing with UFL connectors is the SMA pigtail. Some manufacturers include this with the VTX Rather than the UFL connector going directly to the antenna, it goes to an SMA connector. So I'll plug that in there. We've got an SMA connector on this end. And this allows you to mount the SMA on the quad frame or use a bracket. And you can use whatever SMA antenna you want by just screwing it in. This gives you more options in your build and you're not likely to break the UFL connector with too many insertions. This is fine for lots of builds, but not really for lightweight or tiny whoops. So here's a good example. We've got a UFL connector there going along this pigtail here to an SMA, which is pushed up through this TPU 3D printed bracket. And that means we can then take any SMA antenna. It's SMA because it's got the pin on it, and we can just screw that in. Now, if SMA connectors are too big and UFL connectors are too fragile, what you need is MMCX. Get a few examples of those. Here we go, there's one over here. These are gaining popularity because they're a good compromise of weight, durability, and cycle rating. An MMCX connector pair attaches with a satisfying secure click and this makes it a very simple to swap antennas. Here we've got a pigtail with an MCX on it and this is a simple dipole. And it's rated to last up to about 500 mating cycles which is in SMA territory so it's pretty durable. To be honest you're more likely to crash and break the antenna before you break the connector in terms of the number of insertions. And lots of VTX manufacturers are starting to use this now, particularly on all-in-one flight stacks, like this Emax Magnum that we've got here. The male part is soldered onto the VTX PCB, but it's got quite large pins, so it's way more resilient to crash damage than a UFL plug. It really is a nice option. And it's my preferred option, to be honest, for anything other than a tiny whoop. So if I'm doing a build these days, I will try to look for a VTX that's using an MMCX connector. There is a final option. Don't use a connector. Just solder directly to the VTX PCB. There's obvious advantage to this. It's secure and doesn't weigh anything. But you need to be handy with a soldering iron on a tiny VTX. And if you want to take anything apart or replace the antenna, you've got more soldering to do and risk damaging the pads on the VTX. Has that helped clear up any confusion? I bet you're still making a mistake buying the wrong connector, but hopefully you'll make fewer of them. Thanks for watching, and if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if it's your first visit, then please consider subscribing to the channel for updates. I'll see you next time.